This video is brought to you by Currently. Save time by skipping the wait at a charging station. Currently delivers charging to your car, your home, the office, wherever you want it. Download the app and use promo code out of spec and get 30 days of free charging delivery. Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video and welcome to the Ford F-150 Lightning. You join me here in beautiful Northern Colorado at a water filling station because we are going max payload to see just how much weight this F-150 Lightning can handle. <laughs> So this is the F-150 Extended Range Platinum. The Platinum you can actually only get with the big battery pack. And that is not good for what we're doing here. This is the version Ford sent us, which we're super thankful to get a truck to review. However, because it's a Platinum, it's got all the equipment, the big battery, the massaging seats, the sunroof, that all adds weight, which means that's less weight we can carry. So we are gonna go for a maximum payload efficiency test here. We're gonna fill up the water tote in the rear. It is a dynamic load that shifts. It's as good as we can possibly do. And we actually wanted to start here at the water fill station because I wanna test the accuracy of the onboard scales. The F-150 Lightning has a really cool feature and actually the combustion ones do if you option it correctly. That will pretty much tell you how full the bed is in terms of weight that you can carry. Now we've of course done the mathematical calculations that if we put two people in the truck, we have one time in the bed. No, he won't stay there, I was just joking. We'll have uh, the water tote filled to a certain amount with enough gallons, right around 110 gallons. Then that is going to get us to the maximum payload, which is not very much on this particular truck. Now the maximum you can get on an F-150 Lightning is 2,200 and a bit pounds. I think 2,240. 2,250. 2,250. This one, take a look here at the sticker, is actually 1,619 pounds. So a significant ways away from what that truck would have weighed, uh, of course, being a lesser option vehicle. The total vehicle weight though should be very similar because this has more equipment. So anyway, we're maxing it out. So this is F-150 Lightning maxed out. We're gonna track the scales as water goes in to see just how accurate it is at updating. Then we're going to go to our charging station in Wellington, uh, Colorado. Then we're gonna go up to Cheyenne and back our typical 70 mile per hour loop. If you actually um, are kind of wondering our thought process here, just a few days ago on this channel, we posted a video of this truck unladen on the 70 mile per hour loop style test. Conditions are going to be nearly identical today, which is great, which means we have a really good baseline unloaded and then max payload. And I'm sure you can already guess what's coming next. We're gonna be throwing trailers on this thing and looking at its efficiency with a load on the back. So we got a lot of testing to do. This is part two of many. We're gonna see how efficient the Lightning is when we max the payload out to as close as we possibly can to full. We have some OSHA approved uh, maneuvering tactics going on here. <laughs> Loading into the water fill. We're gonna look at how many, how many gallons go in. This is sort of a calibrated scale here as to how many gallons will go in the truck. We'll then cross reference that to, we're gonna use about 8.3 pounds per gallon. Of course, it does change based off of temperature, but the water's pretty close to room temperature that's coming out, so I think that's a fair measurement. And then we're also gonna compare that to what the scales say. So they're getting everything ready. I'm gonna pay the couple bucks we need to get that thing going, and then we're gonna rock and roll, fill her up. So we have the onboard scales and the menu here, which you can access by hitting the truck, going back to the menu on this beautifully laggy screen. <laughs> Onboard scales, make sure all those parameters are met, they continue. And there's vehicle versus scale. So the scale will show you, it actually zeroes it out, I think. So this should show us exactly how much water or weight we're being added in the water. So, but you can also see the entire scale from zero to 1600 right here. So see what happens. We've actually calculated the payload for two people in there, so it won't go completely over. It should be max though with you in there. So I've selected 133 gallons of water right here. Let's hit go. Um, $2.67. Let's go for that. I'll swipe the card and we'll start this thing up. Oh, it's really coming down. That's awesome.
this is specifically the weight of the water. So once the scale is done sliding and the water is done filling, we should be at around 1,100 pounds, I think. 133, there we go. So we've calculated out 133 gallons plus two people will max this thing out. Time it, show us what the scale is showing here. Uh, we are at 135, 140 gallons. Yeah, I feel like we're just over 133, but certainly not exceeding maximum payload yeah. because there's no one in the truck right now. But if we go ahead and look, and we've accounted for the weight of this tote, uh, I think actually probably a little bit more than what it weighs. And the truck thinks we are overweight. It says, hey, you're actually at 1,600 pounds, maxed out a little bit in the red. And it won't even show us the scale because it thinks we're overweight, but we've calculated where we're actually not. The truck's pretty much empty. It's got maybe 30 or 40 pounds worth of stuff in it right now. So what do you think is going on here, guys? I think we um, take everything out of the truck yep. once we get back home and then reset it if we can. If not, I think it's the most accurate. I agree. I just I think, think maybe the scales aren't completely perfectly accurate here. What do you think, Jordan? It's entirely possible. Yeah. Like they're nifty, but like, are they down to the perfect accuracy? I don't know. Yeah, they, they specifically say you can't use the scales to measure like DOT weight and things like this. So it's maybe more well, of a rough guide. Because the DOT is very strict. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and they're trying to protect themselves. But Skylar, what's your opinion? I think that this is as close to maximum payload. Um, it won't give us an exact readout in there, but I think it's as close to spot on as we can get it. I totally agree. I think uh, this is about as good as it's going to get. If we're right on the money, you can see it's got a little bit of a lean on it. So our, our gallons, I bet this thing output near us makes no difference what we asked for. Anyway, let's go do the test. Certainly if we were doing this on a back road or something like that, all that water moving around would impact the results slightly. Someday we do need an out of spec forklift and I can be out of spec forklift certified. Someday. <laughs> but what would the then. certification be? Can you balance it on two wheels? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is dual motor, it's all wheel drive, 131 kilowatt hour battery capacity, usable as stated by Ford. We've been able to pull about 128, give or take, kilowatt hours out of it. So definitely a beefy battery. And uh, yeah, 583 horsepower, 775 pound-feet of torque. So this you can haul falls. that water around. Yeah, but we're, again, we're doing static 70 miles an hour GPS, which for me in this will be 69 miles per hour. You know what most impressed me about the F-150 Lightning when we tested it unladen a few, few days ago now, when this video goes up, was the fact that there are two permanent magnet motors with no disconnect function, unlike the Rivian that can disconnect the rear motors. Yeah. And this was really close in efficiency to the Rivian. Now, granted, we had all the motors hooked up on both trucks, but the fact that the, the F-150 is significantly larger, we knew it was gonna do a little bit worse on efficiency, and it did, but only by like 10%, somewhere around there, really wasn't a big difference. They've done well with this. This is the most aerodynamic F-150 ever because that's really not saying much <laughs> <laughs> because they blocked out the grill so now it's all just arrow pass so right I, I don't know well we'll see how it goes um but yeah it's it's a heck of a truck doesn't get near as many views at rolling down the street as the rivian people just see it and they think oh f-150 right really no one there. notices it unless it's connected to a charger yeah or if they do notice it around town you're like ah oh, an enthusiast let's go talk to them <laughs> so what do you say we charge it up to 85 percent state of charge we'll let it complete and then we're gonna run the test and see just how much loss there is in terms of efficiency from an unloaded truck in very similar conditions to yesterday in our loop style test to counteract wind and elevation. It's a few degrees warmer than it was yesterday when we ran this test, but not too dissimilar. About the same, not much wind at all. So I'm really excited to see how it compares. This is about as close as we can get in the real world. So let's see how this thing goes. All right, firing up the F-150. Built Ford tough. So, electric range revised and trailer connected. It thinks there's a trailer, which, uh, towing, active trailer, no active trailer. There we go. That's fixed. So now it says back up to 235 range miles of range, which is not as high as you would expect because 85% state of charge, but that's because it actually does use onboard scales. In which case we are, yep. We are pretty much at capacity. Got my friend here, Skyler, and I am driving. We accounted for our weight as well as the weight of the tote, which is about 135 pounds dry. So that puts us at exactly the right amount. So we're going to run climate control at 68 degrees and we will use auto. There we go. Not the best AC in here, would you say? No, <laughs> but pretty good. 
And uh, I'm going to reset the trip here. Trip one, resetting. And we're off. All right, so we're gonna ease into it, easing onto the highway. We use this nice charging station right off I-25. Um, because it's easy access to the highway, and we can basically do our entire test at 70 miles an hour with very little city driving on either end of the test. So we'll see how this goes. It's about 57 mile loop round trip, so it doesn't take too long. Um, there is a little bit of traffic. We're approaching the weekend, I guess. I tend to attribute most traffic to that. But this truck does ride pretty well, um, but unlike the Rivian, there's no air suspension to do active leveling. And that water tow really, you can definitely feel some gyration in the water moving around. So that's, that's a little funny with the accelerator pedal. I can keep it at a static point and it'll still feel like the truck's doing a little bit of movement. It's not too bad. The truck itself is very heavy as is, so. All right. Gentle acceleration. We try to get to 70 just about by the end of this on ramp. Fortunately, this thing just accelerates so well. It's all that torque down low. Don't have to wait for the transmission to shift. No 10 speed auto in this F 150. There we are at 70. And then we need, yep, 69 indicated equals 70 GPS, which we just verified last night. So, just going to cruise here. I am going to turn on my rear camera because I can't see through the back window um, just so I have another point of view. But otherwise, just going to cruise here. Nice and uh, decently warm evening here. Um, and Blue Cruise, hands free, as pointed out on the stereo, the, the driver screen there. So, but it definitely requires you to look straight ahead. This The Blue Cruise eye readers are right here, basically using, I guess, infrared or something to look at you in the face. And it's really pretty accurate. If I look down at all, it just tells me to wake back up. So just going to cruise uh, along at 70. And again, climate control at 68. We have no massage seats or cooled seats or anything like that going. In fact, we're not even plugging in our phone, not using their stereo. I'm trying to make this efficient-minded. So we'll just keep trucking. But Skylar, what do you think of the F-150 Lightning so far? I love it. It's it's a really nice truck. I would say there's not a lot that really excites me about it. But on the other hand, I think that's why it is a good transition for Ford from the traditional F-150 into the EV space. Yeah, they played it safe. They, they did made an F one fifty, but electric, and yeah. it's it's better. Yeah, than than combustion, except for long range and or towing. Yeah, and you don't, you don't get that thirty six gallon fuel tank on here. With <laughs> you you do not you do not. But it's it's better in my opinion, in pretty much every other way. Yep, I agree. Just entered Wyoming, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. And yeah, the wheel's still just twitching away. It's like every time it twitches a little bit, it overcompensates with the water movement and starts twitching more. So I have to like untwitch it by holding onto the wheel really strongly. But we are cranking away. Hard to say what the efficiency will be because it is a bit more uphill as we get up to the actual exit. Um, but when we turn around, it counteracts basically all the hills we did getting here. I mean, it's kind of hilly all the way up and down, up and down, up and down but they're all very shallow hills. So it's always an interesting test out here, uh, but at least it's beautiful. And at least we have AC, man, this would be rough without it. Very. <laughs> all right, now smooth acceleration to get back up to 70 here. And uh, we stay, stay at 70 the whole time, which sometimes relies on a little bit of dodging around traffic, but we're always sure to not draft behind something, especially like a semi truck. So there's and the Rivian. There goes Kyle and the Rivian R1T. <laughs> filming us. <laughs> filming us a few minutes behind us. Man, that thing looks good. So we're 
<laughs> we're at the exit now. I didn't miss it. Uh, <laughs> after we do it all, guess what our final uh, result is? 1.8 miles per kilowatt hour, <clears throat> which I think is only 0.1 worse than what Kyle got in this truck on this exact same route, unladen. Um, I don't know if he did 1.9 or 2. We'll double check when he gets here, but that's really impressive, honestly. You can feel the water, water sway. The oh my gosh. <laughs> Hey, Jordan, great to see you back at the Charger. You made it in one piece. How'd she drive? The Lightning's back. Drove great, although there was some wobble. I had some wobble in the Rivian. <laughs> if you guys haven't watched, you know, a couple days ago, we posted this, this truck's video. And uh, definitely a couple times, like if you get it off canter, you gotta like really steady out the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had I, I couldn't let Blue Cruise steady it because it no. felt like it was just gonna lose it. It was the same thing with Driver <laughs> Plus because it was always reacting the wrong way yeah. and it was getting worse and worse on my system. Did you yep. notice the same? Yep. Yep. And so, that's the problem with a dynamic manually load. Manually drove this with cruise control though at yep. 69 miles an hour indicated, which is 70 GPS, and it did really well. So what was the number unladen? What? Unladen. The number we were we knew we wouldn't hit, but we were going for is 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Okay. We did 1.8. What? That is about a 5% loss. That is minimal. I mean it's a little less than 5% loss, I think. So that is seriously yeah maximum payload in fact i think we were a little over max payload Allegedly. the scales are like oh god <laughs> <laughs> but um no it's the scales aren't perfectly accurate we measured it out really well so this is maximum payload um just over 1600 pounds and like we expected didn't have a huge effect on efficiency which is so interesting because we noticed a seven percent loss with the rivian right yep. and i think and not that this is a total comparison. What do you know? What the weight difference is between max payload on these? About a couple hundred pounds. Ninety pounds. Okay. Like something. Like, they're pretty close. Less than a hundred, I think. Okay. Very similar. But here's the thing. This sticks up much farther on the Rivian because it's got a lower cab height. So I think the aero impact of this affected it more than the F-150, which is a little bit more streamlined. Yep. And so it goes to what we've been saying, what we've been proving over and over, which is the weight doesn't matter it's all about the aero yeah and you yeah you won't notice much like if you could load this thing to the max go camping you're not going to notice the range depletion by the extra extra payload in fact you'd notice it more if you were just to throw it in sport mode i mean it's that minimal sport mode will use more range than a maximum payload you really think sport mode I, will i think so. it all depends how hard you drive it of course I mean, just being sport mode won't but if you romp on it like i like to <laughs> even in the F one fifty. Certainly you can your driving style will have more of an effect than the payload that you put in the truck, I think yep. is what it comes down to. And uh, you know, it goes within saying if you can design accessories for these trucks that don't take much of an aero profile that align within the bed, um, I don't think we're gonna see much range penalty at all. In fact, I'd love to see what accessories could improve aero. <laughs> <laughs> Big spoilers. Wait, you gotta put up the uh, put up the ladder, the <laughs> racing spoiler here. Yep. I this bet is... this would improve aero by at least 20% right oh, there. Oh, yeah. We should oh, have done yeah. that. <laughs> Downforce, baby. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. I think no surprise here after watching the Rivian's results, but nope. we proved it. Max payload, pretty much no difference. Good to do it. See you in the next one. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.